Hey everyone, today I am going to show you how the Civ in my adventure map works. Um, but before I go into detail with that, I wanted to say that I've released a new version of the map. Basically it just contains a load of bug fixes, like the grappling hook in the local version. Um, I'll leave the complete changelog in the description so you can look through that. Um, also, if there are no more bugs in this version, then I can actually start porting it over to the multiplayer version of the map. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, now on to the sieve. The sieve is probably the most important functional block in the map. You place dust blocks on top, and then you get random items out of it. Uh, so the way that this works is there's actually an armor stand in the middle of the block called sieve. And when you place a dust block on top, it detects that there's the dust block on top, it removes the dust block, and then it does it sets a scoreboard objective called fullness to a value of four. And duh, 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 duh. and then a hopper clock actually decreases this value by one every like I think it's one point five seconds. And each different value of fullness um, is used for a different block model. So if I place the dust block on top, it goes 4, 3, 2, 1. And then on 1, the actual items are summoned. So if I go ahead and look at these, these are all the different block models for it. They're all just different types of stained glass. And the reason I use stained glass instead of a op an opaque block is because if I use an opaque block you'd be able to see through the ground and such there'd be like world holes and everything so although the transparent blocks are a bit glitchy sometimes you don't really see them for that long and it looks a ton better than having world holes so anyway I'll now go and show you guys how the actual random summoning works so if I go down here into the command blocks uh, so over here is the actual set up for the command blocks, all these yellow ones are for the sieve. Uh, so you can see here that this first one summons an armor stand from the ocelot. Uh, the second one sets the block from uh, at the ocelot's position to stain the glass. And then we teleport the ocelot downwards by 30 blocks just to get it out of the um, viewing range of the player and then we kill the ocelot. Uh, we then do things like executing from the sieve, which is the armor stand. If it detects air, then it actually kills the sieve. So if I place that and then we destroy the item, it will also destroy the armor stand. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, and then we get to the whole setting the scoreboard. So when it detects sand one block above it, sand of type 0 one block above it, then it will do scoreboard players set. Uh, name sieve fullness 4 and then we have the hopper clock over here actually changing the value over time and then these ones actually just handle the model rendering so like when it's a fullness score of 3 it sets the block to stained glass 2 and so on like that um, so over here we actually have the sieve system so this is using the new 1.8 feature which is the ability to target random entities which is pretty damn awesome because you can do a load of cool stuff with it so for example you can target a random entity like let's say execute at random I won't give a very good example but random entity of type say zombie uh, you need to specify its type I believe as otherwise it will try and do a random player because at R is usually used for a random player but if you specify type then it will know to do a random uh, entity instead so this would basically execute from a random zombie we could do kill at E C equals 1 so that would basically kill a random zombie uh, there are no zombies at the moment because it's daytime but yeah you get the idea so the way that this works is when the fullness score of a sieve is 1 it will actually summon I think 
five or six uh, items from any one of these armor stands, including the one over the well, there's actually a few of them over lava here. So I'll try and give you a demonstration. If I place the block on top of here, it'll sift through, and then a bunch of items will get summoned, and then fall onto the pressure plates. Oh, great. Um, I'll skip the sandstorm because that's going to be annoying. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, as I was saying, when you place the dust block on top, it goes through the system and uh, items are actually summoned from the armor stand. And they fall onto the pressure plate, they activate this command block below, which summons the item, and you get the items out of it. Um, and the items are automatically cleared by a hopper clock as well, so they don't like build up and cause lag or anything. So yeah, that's basically how it works. I've also used this system for the actual spider web spawning and also the random event system. Um, I may as well quickly go through this as well. I won't go through all of it because it's a bit complicated, but the way that this works is here we have a five minute hopper, hopper clock uh, so using transfer cooldown 6000 we can actually set up a hopper hopper clock that only activates every five minutes and so with that it will activate this command block here which does execute from a random armor stand named ran, uh, named random event so that's targeting a random armor stand named random event and it will do summon item a minecraft stone custom name web spawn item. Um, I was a bit lazy and just used web spawn item because I have a hop clock here actually clearing all of the um, web spawn items. So every five minutes it'll summon a random item on any one of these uh, armor stands over here including the ones over lava and it then activates the events. Um, so the whole event system then goes on to over here as well which basically just does a whole load of title commands and the actual things like particle effects and such like that as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've also recently just passed a thousand subscribers so I will I will try and do a special video about that soon. Maybe uh, I have a few maps that are pretty close to being finished. I made them a while ago so I might try and release some of those yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.